Are there concerns with following a carnivore diet? Will you grow your hair long like a fairy boy? Start DMing vegan boys, I, I mean girls on Instagram? Who knows? So I have spoken negatively about the carnivore diet here and there, bits and pieces scattered across my YouTube channel. A few videos on estrogenic feedlot meat, a few videos on iron overload, even how they abuse conventional animals, and neither the vegans or carnivores seem to care about that. Today I want to make the major downsides of the diet very clear, and although I've been vocal about these things at some point in time, this is a matter of composing them together. Before we jump in, as with the vegan diet, the followers of the carnivore diet will act in a similar fashion. You know how all of these ex-vegans get met with, oh, you weren't doing the diet right, you were never really vegan. Kind of the same thing in the carnivore community, if you can call it a community. Uh, except they just ban and ostracize people who have anything negative to say about it. Anything that goes against their agenda of shoving good old American grade A Angus prom beef down people's throats. Ooh wee boys, we're making money tonight. This is where the word cornivore comes from. Cornivore, they feed the cows a lot of corn. It's cheap, it makes them a lot of money. These paid actors are pushing this meat-based diet so they can line their pockets at the expense of people's health. Let's start with the base diet, what most people are familiar with. Mostly muscle meat, ribeye steaks, maybe some eggs, bacon, and dairy thrown in occasionally, all from feedlot, conventionally raised animals. Problem number one is estrogen, antibiotics, pollutants, and the corresponding molecules that end up in the muscle, the protein, and the fat of the meat. These animals are consuming very poor quality agrochemical filled corn and soy based slop. The crops used to feed beef, pork, and chicken are sprayed with so many herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides. They're pumped full of antibiotics, growth hormones, chemicals, and the water they drink is also likely full of these same pollutants. One of the main herbicides, atrazine, has estrogenic properties to fatten up the cattle and that's what we're eating. That's why we're getting so much estrogen. What this means is the meat physically has that bioactive estrogen in it. In addition, there are God knows how many unknown molecules we have yet to discover. How much is it affecting our hormonal system, all of our glands, adrenal, pituitary, thyroid, hypothalamus, and all of these other pollutants that are in the meat and fat causing oxidative stress on the liver, and ultimately our cells being comprised of what we're eating and you don't want to be eating toxic meat. The higher fat foods like eggs, bacon, butter made from these feedlot animals are basically estrogen bombs. You know, cows are a pretty good filter because they have complex digestive systems. I mean, they still get very sick and the meat's bad, but compared to chicken, pig, much, much worse. And now they're able to disguise this feedlot meat under the grass-fed label as long as they feed those animals corn stalks instead of corn kernels. And we know how corrupt these American companies are. They will slap whatever label on it they have to, to sell it to people and market it. This quality concern, you know, the way we're raising our food, what we're spraying on the crops, what we're injecting the animals with, encapsulates the main issue with all diets, not just a carnivore diet, but you know, when you're consuming three, four, five, ten times as much meat as the average person, the estrogenic effects are magnified. That's why this is at the top of the list. Second problem is omega-6. And most people know that the omega fatty acid ratio in our diet is supposed to be, you know, one to one. One part omega-3, one part omega-6. Now, feedlot beef doesn't have a super high omega-6 content, but the ratio is still off. So that will affect the endocannabinoid system in our bodies. And most people are consuming bacon, eggs, chicken, and pork in some capacity. So this is a real concern. Omega-6 fatty acids are precursors to endocannabinoids in our bodies. These cannabinoid receptors regulate both our hunger and our body weight. When you get too much omega-6, you get too many cannabinoids. It basically causes a voracious, insatiable appetite. It's why when most people go feedlot beef carnivore, they're sucking down three to five pounds of meat per day. The combination of estrogen, omega-6, are perfect for fattening someone up, making you lazy, insulin sensitive, and hungry. Carnivores and keto dieters 
have really spoken up about the dangers of high omega-6 vegetable seed oils, but they won't talk about the dangers of high omega-6 animal products, especially eggs, pork, and chicken. They love demonizing vegetable oils and sucking down bacon every morning. It's easy to see why so many carnivores have poor blood work. Low testosterone, high cholesterol, correlates with the estrogen, and omega-6. And those that do have good blood work are probably lying about what they're eating and taking synthetic testosterone, aka steroids. Those two aspects are the main downsides. You know, the pollutants, the omega-6, and then there's other possible negatives of what's in the meat. There could be allergens that stem from what the animals are being fed, some type of residue from the corn and soy actually being in the animal's DNA, which can give you an allergic reaction once you eat the food. All of that being said, most people do feel slightly better than a standard American diet when they go carnivore, but a lot of people actually feel worse and some people even gain weight. I find it ironic that most of the carnivores recommend beef because people feel better eating beef, but the reason they feel better eating beef is because of these downsides. The pork and the chicken are higher in estrogen and omega-6, so why not actually address the issue instead of just lessening the issue? But what if you're buying high quality meat? What are the downsides then? What if there's none of these estrogen, antibiotic, omega-6 concerns? Three main points to cover. Nutrient imbalances, vitamins and minerals, as well as a lack of fermented foods and a lack of carbohydrates to feed the gut bacteria. And nutrient imbalances is really an understatement. Everyone talks about how nutritious, nutrient dense. You know what really pissed me off? I saw a commercial for Organic Valley the other day using the word nutrient dense. Organ-based carnivore diet, so good for you. And I found it odd that most of these other carnivores that are talking about nutrient density don't mention specific nutrients because they're selling fake grass-fed meat. If they make claims that a food is nutritious, that's less legally liable than making claims about a specific vitamin like K2 or a specific mineral like iodine. This has caused massive confusion and people coming to me with various vitamin toxicity and deficiency issues. More is not better, but that's the picture these people have painted. In regards to vitamins, most people are getting too much vitamin A, not enough K2, really no K2, and that relates uh, to the fermented foods which we will talk about. That combined with a lack of promotion for getting sun for vitamin D3 puts people in tough positions where they aren't feeling good but can't figure out what's wrong. Hey, I've been eating all these nutritious foods, I felt great initially, but now not so much. It's because most people overdo it. Minerals are a bit more cut and dry, as you can imagine. Eating all of this red meat has a lot of iron, and iron is regulated by copper and magnesium. Problem is, a carnivore diet is lacking in copper and magnesium due to animal foods being zinc-based and plant foods being copper-based, as well as having magnesium. But of course, a carnivore is never going to admit that most people should incorporate plant foods or some type of supplement. And those nutrients, copper, magnesium, are contained in foods like liver, but liver has a correspondingly high iron content which negates the copper. Don't let anyone tell you that you can eat liver if you have iron overload, it'll just make things worse. You do have foods like salmon and squid that are copper based, but you know the Texas Cattlemen's Association doesn't sell squid, so they're not going to recommend that. And those foods are also not really common or calorically dense enough to fix an imbalance. And this is what happened to me. I had iron overload in my liver. I felt like I was on death's door. My liver enzymes were crazy, crazy high. I was carnivore for five, six years doing well, and then things took a drastic 180. I basically couldn't sleep for two years until I figured out what was wrong with me. It does take a while to manifest itself, and it can be easily prevented by consuming quality plant foods, or taking a copper and magnesium supplement. The lack of fermented foods and carbohydrates ties into our gut health. Neither are required or present on a typical carnivore diet, and it's why I advocate for kefir, yogurt for probiotics, as well as honey for prebiotics. So you can do this on carnivore, and although a lot of carnivores have said that fiber isn't necessary, for most people to have a healthy gut microbiome, fiber is necessary. Our microbiome is composed of so much bacteria and yeast that is vital to how good we feel and they require certain nutrients as well. 
These microbes help us digest food and they synthesize certain nutrients such as vitamin K2. All of our ancestors consumed rotten meat, basically leaving fish or flesh for weeks to months at a time to sit unrefrigerated, unfrozen. This is akin to us consuming cheese or yogurt, which is, you know, more approachable. It's kind of weird. They're both fermented animal products, but you, know, you give someone a hunk of cheese versus, you know, a stinky rotten fish. <laughs> Depends on what culture people are in and Americans are averse to that type of food. So these fermented foods have microbes like lactobacillus that can populate our gut. And in addition to the foods, we also have the vitamins those microbes produce. So the K2 we just mentioned. So not only are you getting microbes when you consume a fermented food, you're actually getting the vitamins that the microbes produced as the food fermented. Uh, vitamin K2 being the single most important nutrient for proper skeletal development during all stages of life, especially youth, you needed to deposit calcium into the bones. This bacteria in our stomach needs carbohydrates. They cannot live off protein or fat. That's why the Inuit Eskimos, First Nation Alaskans, had to eat large amounts of rotten meat every day. They didn't have a carbohydrate source, so instead of feeding the gut microbes, they just repopulated their gut every day. When you eat carbs, you're fueling your body and feeding your gut bacteria. I think that covers just about every general problem with the carnivore diet. And the main problem here is that everyone wants the easy way out. But when you try to adhere to simple protocols without understanding human metabolism in its entirety, you run into issues. In my case, my health has suffered drastically, but I've learned things that no one else has and I've helped countless people with that information. So if you guys want to learn more about this, you, know, you can check out my playlist on grain-fed carnivores. Uh, if you don't wanna spend hours and hours and hours browsing through my YouTube channel, you can go to frankdashtefano.com, check out my book, my carnivore course and consultation, and this is kind of an order of how much help you would like. Uh, we could go over some of these things in the middle. These are basically various symptoms that can be caused by one thing or the other thing, like low libido from estrogen, carb cravings from uh, lack of gut bacteria, high cholesterol from omega-6, anxiety could be gut related, weight gain, estrogen, omega-6, fatigue, combination of this, SIBO, H. pylori, candida, brain fog, histamine, are all gut issues that can relate to fatty liver, a copper deficiency causing insomnia, hunger, again, the omega-6, allergies, those soy and corn metabolites in the meat, eczema, psoriasis, acne, can all partially be caused by one of these nutritional problems. So, you know, not only do these apply to a carnivore diet, a lot of these things apply to a general diet as well. So hopefully this helps you guys out and you can use this video as kind of like a starting point for people that want to do carnivore but are worried about what could happen. Uh, I guess this doesn't really address basic stuff. Like this is a kind of really advanced carnivore diet video like the person is assuming that you don't have to eat vegetables, that you don't need vitamin C, da, da, da. so I guess, uh, I guess this is definitely not for the beginner. Uh, this is for someone that understands a carnivore diet is okay and wants to learn more about it. So thanks for joining me today, guys. Hopefully this helps you out. You know how to support me down in the description below. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.